My late husband's parents tried to claim his property and business right after his funeral. Now they're furious that his final video exposed their cruelty. I-44, female, recently lost my husband, 48. We had been together for 20 years, married for 12, and five years ago he had been diagnosed with leukemia and a few weeks back he passed away. Honestly, I have made my peace with it. I know that I'm going to miss him terribly, and my life is never going to be the same again. I highly doubt that I will ever be able to love somebody as much as I loved him, but he's in a better place now and he was really sick the last few months of his life, so I'm just relieved that he is finally at ease now. Anyway, last week we finally had a funeral service for him. I was not expecting his parents to show up because they have not had the best relationship with him and for the last eight years have not even been on speaking terms with each other. My husband had walked out on his family and sworn that he was never going to speak to them again and for good reason if I'm being honest. You see, my in-laws are the kind of people who had a golden child and they never even bothered to hide it from my husband. My husband's older brother, 50 male, my brother-in-law, Jack, is a no-good deadbeat alcoholic and has always been that way, but for some reason his parents have always preferred him over my husband no matter what he did. In spite of that, my husband tried his best to be there for his parents and his brother. He was a family man through and through, but they never valued him, and when we started dating I started noticing how differently they were treated in their home. I spoke to my husband about it several times and told him to stand up for himself, but he told me that this was his family, and he didn't want to be anything but kind to them. So no matter how they behaved, he was just too nice for his own good. But after he started dating me, he started taking less of their BS, and instead of just being a doormat for them, he would actually occasionally stand up for himself because I would keep reminding him that if they were treating him this badly, then this was not the kind of family that he needed in his life. By the time we had completed three years together, he had no tolerance for his family's behavior and wouldn't entertain the way that they treated him. That led to friction between them because they were so used to walking all over him that they couldn't believe this new version, and they realized that I might have been a part of this since he had started changing ever since he had met me. So they tried to brainwash my husband into leaving me, but it didn't work and it only made our relationship even stronger. So suffice it to say, my in-laws and I have never gotten along and have always been at odds, except I have been on the right side of things, and they have never been anything but horrible to us. And so when they actually showed up at the funeral with Jack, I was pretty surprised because the last time that we had interacted, my husband and I had walked out after a really nasty fight and it had not been pretty. After my husband and I got married, we had been trying to distance ourselves from my in-laws anyway, so it's not like we had a good relationship at that point in time, but they had invited us for Christmas dinner and we had attended out of courtesy. However, when we got there, we realized that we had made a huge mistake because all they did at that party was talk about how my husband's new business was not going to do well and it was doomed to failure. So after the party, we confronted his parents about it and they said that they were just helping him realize that this was not the right thing to do and that he should just stop copying his brother because apparently even Jack had started a similar business. But that had happened after my husband had announced his. For context, we work with plastic products and recycling. We had actually researched the market and we knew what we were doing, unlike Jack, so that ended up in a huge fight and we walked out after deciding that we were never going to speak to them again. Obviously, Jack's business did not take off because he did not have the sort of acumen that my husband had, and also because he hadn't done any hard work of his own and was just expecting to piggyback off of my husband's efforts. Anyway, it has been eight years since then, and they never bothered to get in touch with us ever again. Even when my husband was diagnosed and I'm pretty sure that they knew about it, they did not speak to us and when he was at the hospital, they never visited us either. Showing up at the funeral was a surprising move from them. I didn't pay any attention to them throughout the entire service, and they only approached me after it was over. They tried to speak to me nicely, but I was not going to buy that. I kept a straight face and I told them that they were welcome to offer condolences, but then they would have to leave because I was not interested in interacting with them. I didn't even wish to interact with them when my husband was alive. So now that he was gone, I had even less incentive to speak to them, and I made that very clear so that they dropped their act as well and his parents told me that they needed to speak to me in private. I told him that they would need to wait until everyone had left because otherwise I would not have enough time to speak to them. I was very curious as to what they wanted to talk to me about. After everyone had left, I spoke to them outside the venue. Jack did not wait around and left along with everybody else. So it was just my in-laws and I having a conversation. They told me that they had thought about visiting my husband when he was in the hospital, but ultimately they decided against it because he was already pretty sick and they did not want to bother him even more. It was a really lame and silly excuse for not visiting their son when he was literally on his deathbed, but I did not expect any better from them either. I just told them that I did not need any justification for what they had done and they needed to come straight to the point because I had had a long day and I didn't want to waste more of my time with them. They seemed pretty upset when I spoke to them in that tone, but that's what they deserve. Anyway, they told me that they were here because they wanted to say goodbye to their son one last time and they also wanted to speak to me about whatever we had left behind. Now, everybody knew that I was going to take over the business after him. 
It might have been his idea, but I had been with him every step of the way for the execution and everything. So that was naturally going to be mine and we had the paperwork sorted out too. So as soon as they brought it up, I made it clear to them that they had no chance at that. His terms had been very clear right from the beginning. He had made sure to get all of these legal formalities in order as soon as he had been diagnosed. I knew that they had probably been expecting to speak to me about it, so they could somehow get Jack in on the business, but I was not going to allow that. Then after a brief pause, they told me that since they couldn't have the business, they wanted me to at least leave the property to them. And by the property, they meant the home that we had put so much effort into designing. And they wanted it for themselves because they believed that his family needed it more. Since we did not have any kids, it's not like I needed that entire house to myself because it was a pretty spacious place. And they claimed that they were sick of living in their own home and needed a change of scenery. So they planned on living on our property and putting their own house up for rent for an extra source of income. I was shocked that they were even suggesting this because after not speaking to somebody for eight years, you don't just show up at their funeral and ask their widow to let you have the house that they had built for themselves. I lost my temper. I was already pretty miserable. And so I yelled at them to get out because I literally couldn't stand to see them. I had already been pretty annoyed at them. And I guess they had been pretty upset with me too because I had already told them off twice before. So when I started yelling at them, they started yelling right back and said that they were just here for peace, but I was being a total jerk. And they did not appreciate that. They then played the age card saying that I did not know how to respect the elderly. I hit right back saying that they did not even know how to respect the dead. Since my husband had barely been buried, they were already here circling like vultures. And they made it worse by saying that since I had refused when they had asked me politely, they were going to make sure that they sued and got the property for themselves. Just to be clear, my husband had clearly stated in his will that everything that he had is going to go to me. So I don't even know why they thought that threatening to sue me was going to be a good idea since I think my husband was pretty clear. I told him that they were never going to win even if they decided to sue me. And they said that it was my fault that their son had not spoken to them for the past eight years and hadn't been able to reconcile with him, which doesn't even make sense. They thought that I had brainwashed him to turn against them, so they were going to make sure that I got nothing out of him. I just told them to leave. And when they finally left, I drove back home as well. I was really pissed off at the time and I hadn't been thinking straight. So I had completely forgotten about this particular video that my husband had asked me to play for his parents if they bothered to show up at his funeral. It had totally slipped my mind, and I only remembered it after I had come back home. I'll come to the content of the video later. I had actually helped him set up and record the video about a month before he passed away. So I knew exactly what he had said in it, and I knew that this would be very hurtful for his parents. So I decided that I was going to take a break for a couple of days, and then I would get back to my in-laws, so that they would know exactly where they stood with their son and how it was their own fault, not mine like they were making it out to be. A couple of days after the funeral, I decided to reach out to my in-laws. We had each other blocked everywhere so I decided to drive to their house and play the video for them in person. They were very shocked to see me but I decided to be polite with them and told them that my husband had actually left something for them and I wanted to show them what it was. I knew that they wanted to slam the door shut on my face so badly that they were equally curious and greedy. So we gathered in the living room, and I played the video for them. Now coming to the content of the video, my husband had probably known that his parents would come along to harass me after he passed away, so he had taken all the necessary precautions. Legally, he was all covered and now for the emotional aspect of it, he had made that video where he called out his parents on their terrible behavior with him in the past. He said that he had always felt like less of a priority in the household because they always seemed to prefer the golden child Jack over him, and they had never bothered to hide it either. He then went on to remind them of all the ways they had treated him terribly like back in high school when his parents had refused to pay for him to go to college but were happily spending thousands and thousands of dollars on his brother who didn't even do anything apart from party day and night, and even when he started working at his first job they were constantly comparing him to Jack who was earning slightly more than him at that point in time. It was really unfair too because Jack was obviously older and had a head start on him by two years. Even then he did not say anything against his own parents but then the way they had dismissed his startup was unacceptable and even though they had been wrong they had never bothered to apologize for it. They hadn't even spoken to him when he had been diagnosed so now they had no right to harass me over what they thought they deserved because he had actually left them exactly what they deserved which was nothing. So in the video he told them to never show up around me ever again and said that he had actually been dead to them for a really long time so his actual death should not even make a difference to them. Just like it doesn't make a difference to him whether his parents or his so-called family is fine or not because in truth the only family he has ever had is me. It was quite touching. I had tears in my eyes by the end of that video not because of what he said about his parents but because of what he said about me and as for my in-laws they were pretty much dumbstruck by the time the video ended. After the video was done playing I pulled myself together I turned around and I told them that even if they tried to file a suit against me I was just going to play this video as evidence that it was my husband who really did not want anything to do with them and not want to leave anything to them. 
The reason for that would be that he had been mistreated by them all his life, so they had nobody else to blame but themselves. It was definitely not my brainwashing or manipulation that had led to this, and I hope that they knew that now but instead of just accepting that they turned it around on me, and said that I was a horrible human being for playing this video knowing that they were still grappling with the loss of their son, and now I had gone out of my way to play this horrible video for them. They then went on to accuse me of using editing apps to morph their dead son's face onto some person, and came up with other equally wild theories just to get rid of the guilty feeling, and when I said that I did not have to prove anything to them they told me that I was a selfish human being, and I did not deserve anything that my husband had left to me. They seemed genuinely upset when accusing me of all of that, and since then I've been wondering if I did the wrong thing by playing that video for them, because even though they had always treated my husband badly they were his parents, so maybe they genuinely felt bad. I don't know. I just feel confused right now. AITA for playing a video that my husband had left for his parents for them? Edit. Some of you guys have been a bit confused about whether I played that video just because I wanted to or not. Well, it's partly because of that and partly because my husband had literally specifically given me instructions to play that video for his parents in case they tried to bother me after he was gone and tried to claim any property like they were doing. If I'm being honest, it's not like I went out of my way to do that to them. It was my husband who had told me to do it, and I was just adhering to his instructions to make them back off. I guess what I'm trying to say is it was just as much his idea as it was mine, so I wouldn't say that I did this completely of my own accord. And some of you have been asking about where Jack was during all of this, and honestly I have no idea. He was definitely not at home when I went over so I don't know what he's up to. Anyway I hope this clears things up. Update 1. Hey I would just like to say thank you so much you guys for all the support that you've shown me in the comment section of the original post. Dealing with the loss of a loved one is never easy especially when it's somebody like my husband. He was a really sweet and gentle soul and I'm gonna miss him every day for the rest of my life. So it hurts when people call him names especially knowing that I already miss him and he's no longer in this world. I don't understand what the point of calling him a doormat for his parents and a pushover and names like that was. He's gone. He's not even going to be able to read that. The person who will read that though is me and I'm already really hurt and miserable over the loss of my husband. I don't need to hear about everyone's negative thoughts about him as well. I know that everybody is entitled to have their own opinion but speaking ill of the dead that's not nice. So I don't appreciate that and I would really like it if you guys wouldn't say such things about him anymore. Apart from that thank you so much to everyone who is supportive of me. Anyway it's been a week since I visited my in-laws and they haven't reached out to me yet. When I left their house that day they were very pissed off and were accusing me of all sorts of crazy things like trying to hurt them on purpose and intimidate them into backing off and filing lawsuits against me or even contesting the will. I mean if they want to do that they are welcome to do so. It's just going to be a waste of their time and money because I highly doubt that they will be able to get anything out of this. But hey if they want to go ahead in spite of the video they can do that by all means. Who am I to stop them? I've kept myself pretty busy since then so I don't need to think about any of this. I'm just trying to focus on work right now because I have to keep my grief aside and think about the more practical aspects of life as well. I'm just lucky that I have really supportive parents and they have been living with me for the past couple of days. I was just tired after coming back home from work, so they took over all the household duties. My father is still going to work, but he's told me that he's going to take care of all the things that my husband used to do earlier like pay the bills, get the groceries since I've always been kind of forgetful and my mom's going to handle the cooking and cleaning. We did have a housekeeper but she quit for some personal reasons which is what I had been telling my parents about a couple of days back and the very next day they showed up at my house with their stuff. So that was really sweet of them and I'm really thankful that people are taking such good care of me. Update 2. So my in-laws have decided to contest the will. My husband's lawyer spoke to me about it and we're not too worried about what's going to happen with that. They're going to lose. We already know that. What was really surprising was that they sent out an email to me to tell me that my strategy of trying to scare them off with that video was not going to work because they were going to get what was rightfully theirs. My husband was their flesh and blood before he was my husband, so they were more entitled to whatever he had built for himself, and they said that they were not only coming for the property, but they were also going to make sure that they got some shares of the business as well since they felt like they deserved it. Thankfully for me courts don't function on the basis of what people feel. So they can feel that they're entitled to the entire world but that's not going to help their case. Anyway that email is going to come in handy, so I have it saved and send it to my lawyer. I'm still living with my parents, and they have been very helpful and supportive. They have even offered to speak to my in-laws for a peaceful conclusion to all of this because they think that they might actually entertain my parents' authority more. But I told them it's not necessary because I want them to go ahead and deal with the lawsuit because I know it's going to be a colossal waste of their time and that's exactly what I intend on doing, wasting their time and money. People have been dropping by quite frequently for the past couple of weeks to either check on me or to offer their condolences since some people could not be present at the service, and I've been pretty busy with handling work and then having guests over. So I have barely had any time to think about what I'm going through and process my feelings. 
But a couple of days back I found myself in my husband's office for some papers related to work, and I almost broke down because I just missed him so much and I could envision him in the place. I just wish I could speak to him one more time and let him know how much I love him and how much I'm missing him right now. But I know I can't so I just think about it and then let it go. Right now my only goal is to make sure that our business does well since I know that he would love that and he intended for US to make a lot of money and be extremely successful. And his ambition has given me the motivation to work really hard, so I'm doing exactly that. Update 3. Hi, so it's been two weeks since my in-laws contested the will and so far they have nothing. But something very interesting happened yesterday. I received a message from Jack of all people. I was quite surprised by that since he and I literally have nothing to talk to each other about. And given what his parents are doing I thought it was quite bold of him to contact me. We have never been particularly close and are definitely not on terms where we can just text each other. I hadn't even blocked him because I did not have his number but when he texted me he said that he wanted to speak to me and was asking if he could visit me at home. I found that kind of weird and my initial instinct was just to say no and block him. But I decided to give it a chance because I just had a gut feeling this was something I wanted to talk to him about. Besides if he was reaching out to me I was pretty sure that they had something to do with my in-laws. Anyway I agreed to meet him and told him to come over. My parents were going to be at home so I didn't think that I had to worry about anything. When he finally came over he had brought flowers and offered his condolences at first and said that he hadn't been able to say it at the funeral because I was busy with his parents. But he really wanted me to know that he was sorry for my loss. That was surprisingly sweet and I didn't know what to say because this was not the kind of behavior I had been expecting. Earlier, whenever we would interact at his family's place, he would always come off as quite boisterous and egoistic, but this was a very different person. He also did not absolutely reek of alcohol like he used to years back, and it looked like he had cleaned up his act. After a bit of small talk, he finally got to the point and told me that he was here to tell me that his parents were planning on defaming me, and it was not going to be pretty. They were planning on making up a bunch of lies about how my husband had apparently borrowed money from them to start his business initially, and now I was refusing to entertain their request when they needed their money back. Already there was no binding contract, so they could not legally come after me, so they were planning on posting this on social media. It was an incredibly stupid plan, and I don't even know why they thought this was something that could work, but I was really thankful that Jack had come to me about it so I would be able to nip this in the bud. He told me that in the past couple of years he had been trying to be a better person and had even wanted to reach out to us several times, but after the way he had been treating his brother for the past God knows how many years, he just couldn't find the courage to do it, and he was here to say that he was sorry for everything even though it was too late. Then he actually started crying and I really didn't know what to do but my father came to the rescue and comforted the guy and even made him a cup of tea, so he would calm down a bit, and finally when he left I told him that everything was going to be fine and I was sure that his brother appreciated his gesture. That seemed to make him feel slightly better and I think I did the right thing. Even if he was too late in coming around and realizing his mistakes at least he did come to his senses, and that's more than I can say for other people like his parents. To be honest I don't even think it was much of his fault. His parents had failed to be there for either of their kids, and they thought that they were doing Jack a favor by treating him like the golden child but in reality they just spoiled him rotten, and in the end they did not do any favors to either of their kids. I just feel sad for both of them. They deserve better parents and better lives. Update 4. Hi so I spoke to my lawyer and I told him what Jack had said to me. We decided not to do anything and waited out so that they would make those posts and we would be able to use that against them in court. I spoke to Jack as well and he said that he was ready to testify against his parents if that's what it came to. So everything was sorted a couple of days ago and they finally made that post on social media and I immediately wrote an email to them that if they did not take it down as soon as possible then we could be pursuing this and would be sending them a defamation lawsuit. I was kind of counting on them to be stubborn and not take that down but I guess they realized that this was going to be a losing battle and it probably didn't help that I had told them that Jack was on our side here. So they were going to lose. Anyway they took the post down immediately but still maintained that they were going to take everything away from me. At this point it was getting pretty boring so I wished them good luck with that and then blocked that email address. Now they are free to do what they want. I really wish them luck. They definitely were going to need it since now the only person that could be counted on Jack was not on their side anymore. So. They were on their own, and I really want to see how they are going to deal with this now.